safety. And then some of the students who are in the call wanted to join in. So I'm gonna give you know a couple more minutes for us to get started. All right. Okay, thank you for coming to today's session. We have a lot to cover today. Um, I'm excited to share, have this session with you guys today because actually this is our first ever kind of parents facing events. We had a UK boarding school session at 8 a.m. today, so about an hour and a half ago. But we typically create content that's facing the students. And um, but then we had a lot of interest coming from the parents wanting to learn more about our product and how we guide our students. So we created these sessions where we talk a little more about our paid programs and um, SAT group sessions are one of those. So we're going to talk about how we host our SAT group tutoring sessions and um, also in the process, I'm going to share some of the free resources and the strategies that we um, share with our students. Okay, let's get started. So first off, this is me. Um, for the parents out there, um, if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, here's my LinkedIn um, QR code up here. And if there's any students who's listening to this, um, you can follow me, we can be friends on Instagram, which is um, my Instagram handles right here. And um, also, our Millie's Instagram handle is on the bottom. Any questions you can ask us there. Um, briefly for the parents, what qualifies me to host these sessions? I, I'm a, one of the founders, <coughs> co-founder of Millie. And Millie is a company dedicated to helping the international school students globally. There's 10,000 international schools as of now, and it's expected to grow to 17,000 international schools by 2027. I was born in Korea. I studied mostly in the US, but I also studied in the UK as well. I lived in the US, UK, Singapore, um, and I understand the pain of what it is to be kind of navigating through this global um, education as well as a career um, career prospect prospects. I worked in a, my last role before starting Millie was I was working in JP Morgan. I was in AI research and um, data analytics. I was a vice president there. And prior to that, or during this, my career process before switching to Millie, I went to Cornell for undergrad and um, Northwestern for master's degree. And most recently finished the executive MBAs from Columbia Business School and London Business School. So that should hopefully give you some <laughs> confidence that um, we, how we manage our students and also how we um, manage our mentors, which is very important, right? Because your, your students, your kids, children learn from our mentors and um, hopefully we'll give you some background information on you know, uh, who we are and the why we are doing this. All right, so before we get in, I think it's important to know how the students typically, um, how the journey looks like for a student until they join our group courses, right? Um, so, and the best way to do so is giving you a demo of our test portal and um, that would kind of give you like, okay, like how do we put students in this class and that class? Like what, you know, um, what is the experience like online experience is like, all those things could be answered through this um, test portal demo. So first off um, is that um, typically our students learn about Millie through school. We work very, very closely with the schools. We have tens of um, partner schools um, all around the world. And um, the counselors or the principal or the um, DP, the program coordinator, they're in touch with Millie. They distribute the content that Millie sends out to schools to their students. And in this particular case, it's SAT diagnostic tests that we host every single month. And then students will see uh, receive um, information in this format, whether it's a poster or they would also have the links and then the counselors distribute it through emails or they would post it on Google Classroom, whichever tool that they use, right? And after this, students sign up to our diagnostic test. And then here, you can actually sign up. I'm also gonna share where and how you can sign up to our next diagnostic, which is 100% free. Everyone should sign up um, and try to test their um, knowledge. And then <clears throat> they sign up to this board 
And then after that, they would get an email from us that explains and that you know explains all the details about the diagnostic test, 100% virtual. Uh, we initially started this SAT group course and diagnostic because of the demand from our partner schools because all the PSATs were canceled when the schools were hybrid. So uh, College Board used to have these um, in-school, you know, um, test SAT practice tests that's gone out to all the students. But 2020, everything was canceled. And then we were, my, our schools are looking for ways to kind of assess and, you know, um, do the testing for the student in a virtual setting. So we launched this um, online program and then after the students sign up, they would get an email like this about a week before the test. And then after that, they would sign themselves up to in our portal. I don't know actually if this would work because this is the past test, but let me see if they can still sign up. Um, and then they would sign up to the test uh, like so, and then they would get an email from us with the link to their test tool. So you would come here and then the student would click this. Um, yeah, and then it would take them to their test board. So this one is a fake board. Uh, this is for me and I didn't score 500, but um, it's a fake board. And then before they take the test, obviously there's no scores on the bottom of this. So this is um, just for the demo purposes, but let's say that the students come in here. And then with all this information, we send you the Google Calendar invite, everything. And then they just show up on the test day, which is, um, it was actually last Saturday. We had about 300 plus students from 27 countries and you know, about more than half of them actually showed up to this four hour test. And then we've just sent out the scores. So after the students take the test, what happens is they would get their score results like this. And I'll show you one case. So yeah, this is more of a actual, <laughs> it's not a fake um, grading. Uh, so based on the student, they would get this score. And then after getting this, here's a quick demo of how it looks for the counselors. It's very important because um, working with the schools, counselors should know how your child is performing, right? And a lot of times the, the one thing that I really didn't like about private education is that there's no linkage to formal education. Wouldn't it be great if the these, you know, the tutors that you work with, like piano tutor or whoever, is actually talking to your school teachers and school counselors. So everyone is on the same page about the progress. But that is not the case. Schools a lot of times want to kind of hinder the students from actually doing um, private um, sessions. So it's kind of like unfortunate that there's no lineage of the data and the information. We change this because, you know, we work with the schools and then counselors see reports like this after the test. So they would see how many students signed up and then how many students actually showed up and took the test. So it's very clear for the counselors also go in and check how their students are performing. After this, earlier today, well, we had a session is actually we do a feedback session after the test. And then again, these are all free. This is where we share share with our students um, the average score, some leaderboard, meaning, you know, the top schools who performed well and um, give more strategies in this session. This is very, very important because um, when you just hear about, you know, this is how you should do it without having done it yourself, it it you it comes goes in from one year and then comes out of the other year. Versus if you've done this yourself, you are much more likely to listen in because you have your paper in front of you, and then you can um, hear this content that's very very fresh in your memory, and you can strategize yourself. Be like, aha, uh -huh, okay, I gotta do this, and then um, maybe I'm lower in here than the other students. I have this much time because I'm a sophomore, but you know. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And then after this session, which I'll share with you in a bit, uh, and then they can choose to join our um, learning platform. And this learning platform is, here's a sample how it would look like in our group course. So a student typically when they come into our group course, everyone will have access to their, their study platform like this. 
And um, in this case, this class was composed of three students and um, um, two mentors. We only have small size courses because we don't like, how do I say, like we believe that there has to be a personal touch to the students. And then we see the optimal number that would allow us to do that is probably up to five students per class. And um, when it goes above five or like 10 plus students, how is it different than just you watching Khan Academy at home, which is free, you don't need to pay, right? So kind of finding the right balance and like, you know, why not then just like listening to lectures at school? Uh, we want to have a really, really high touch, personalized services, personalized um, help for our student. That's why our group classes are three to five um, um, students. Is everything clear so far? Raise your hand because I'm not, you know, I'm just like monologuing. So if you, so far you're following, then raise your hand. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so I continue. It's, I'm gonna go on for another 10 minutes about our course. And then after that, I'll give you some of the test tactics. And after that, you guys can uh, ask me questions. All right, so this course, then um, everything is saved here. Again, this is, uh, today's session is facing the parents. So my language is gonna be for the parents, for students, keep that in mind. So for the students typically join here, and then what would happen is every student will have access to the tool and then they would um, do the homework. So for instance, we give homework to kind of introduce themselves to um, their classmates as well, because um, the students come from different parts of the world. So it's very exciting to kind of meet your friends through this channel as well. This particular board that I'm sharing with you, it's with one school. So it's actually one school, different grades, but um, we have current classes that's going on. They have students from three different countries sitting in the same room. Um, so it's important then, you know, they can introduce themselves. So all of that homework is saved here. So I asked everyone to like introduce themselves. I'm not teaching, but uh, this is the first thing that I did for this class. And then the rest of the session is all the class notes are saved here. Let's see one of the class notes. So this is mandatory for all the mentors to write down um, what went on in class. So you would see there's a lecture series and the, all the materials that they went through here. And then you would also see some of the personalized feedback. Personalized feedback, it doesn't go out every single session, okay? Like there's no, you cannot point out like XYZ did this well, this well, every single session. But this part about what we've done is in every single session and every now and often the mentors will give personal feedback as well. Let's see some other sections. This one, this is the math section. And notice how Chris here is giving the um, recording access code. We have all our classes recorded and then we save it on the same board that you just see. And then you, he mentions all the things. And for him, for him this time, there was a short kind of one line um, feedback on the student, which is great still, right? And then here are the recordings. So this is what we do. And the students have perpetual access to this board. Perpetual access means if they're in grade 10, they take the course with us, and then they can have this access until they become a senior. And then if they want, they can come and rewatch the video. Um, a lot of times we know that it's like rewatching the video is very kind of um, a bit like taxing, it's like tiring, but then, you know, we have cases that students study on their own in case they had to miss some of the courses, right? In this case, this one student had, was late for personal reasons, then um, you have a recording available. And all the homework, you have to submit it minimum a day before, because another thing that I wanted to mention is that this is not a lecture course. This is not like school that you sit there and then just listen. Every single course material is created based on your homework. Meaning that first session, when they come in, it's based on the diagnostic test that you took. You saw earlier how that works. And then based on that, we form classes. And there's two types of classes, which I'll go through after this. So um, what we call intro and intensive. So the, the beginner students would take the intro course and then the advanced students would do, take the advanced course. And even within those buckets, we also you know, put students into different groups because we, because we have the test scores. 
from them, right? And then after that, what happens is the mentors already have all this information about your child, how they should prepare. We have syllabus for the sessions, but not just blindly going in with the syllabus, the mentors will look at the diagnostic test scores, previous homework, and they adjust their syllabus based on this particular group of students. Um, I don't know, Joe, if you have a question, I see your hand is raised. Do you have a question? Okay, no, <laughs> that was a no. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and let's look at some of the homeworks, what happens. So homework goes out pretty similar and look at this, how the students are just like submitting their paper. Here, here, more paper, more homework going up, right? So that's how the homework is done. And then also students get notified for all the deadlines, all the class, Zoom, all that stuff. Um, there's two ways we do it. So obviously the Google Calendar, um, so the class is happening at the same time. You notice how this was November 3rd to December 3rd, 4.30 to 6 p.m. Doha time. And then you have the Zoom link, same Zoom link for every single Tuesdays and Thursdays here. And in addition to it, we send a, mess, we send a calendar block to their uh, Google Calendar. Um, and in terms of the homework and the deadlines, there's an email, this tool that you see, you can download it on app. So you can have it on your phone. And then when there's a new update coming up, you get notified on your phone. So when there's new homework coming in, you can read. When there's a new note coming after the session, you can read on the phone. And if you need to say something, then you can say, um, you know, so for instance, um, you know, Cassandra said, I need to watch, what's the password, things like that. You can just you know, do it on your phone, just like any other social app that you would be familiar with. Um, Okay, so that's our test portal. And I think the next one is then I can walk you through um, the some of our classes. That's um, already what type of classes that we have and then what are some of the benefits of joining our course. Would that be okay? So um, next one would be for you and the, for the parents and for the students. This whole experience that I just mentioned, um, if you want to have your child take the SAT diagnostic with us. We use the same college board, so the official SAT um, test paper. So you can be rest assured of the quality or the difficulty is um, in line with the actual test. So if you wanna sign your um, child up for the test, you can scan this QR code now, and then it will take you to the page where you can sign up. I'm gonna wait one minute here and then we can move on to the other part. All right, so if you have any questions now, um, you can use the chat room or the uh, actually Q&A function to ask me the questions. The voice is disabled for <laughs> our <laughs> webinar sessions because sometimes we have like our my last session, we had 50 something um, attendees. So it's hard to manage all of them. So you can use the Q&A function, please. And then um, at the end, I'll see if I can also like unmute you guys, um, but for now, that's how we can um, go about. So now let's go into um, what I wanted to do is show you some of the courses that's available. And the two courses, um, I think this would be good to start from here. So we have two courses available at the moment. And then a lot of the parents are actually asking about the uh, summer intensive course. Yes, we will have a summer classes, but this will just take this page as like a overview of our program. And then um, we will share with you our um, website where you can purchase our courses. And then um, that's where you would see updated list of the um, events for the courses coming up. 
So it's kind of interesting, right? Because um, a lot of people are used to the, all of us are very used to online shopping experience, but not many of us are used to buying classes on the, you know, on the online experience. It's more in person or et cetera. So, but think of it as like you're buying just any other online stuff and then it's just about your courses. So if you want to sign up right now, there's two types of courses available. So first one is Millie Intro. So Millie Intro starts on the next one, starts on February 9th. There's another one starting in March. Um, I think it's March 14th, um, not sure, 100% sure, but we'll show you. And it, it, it's five weeks period. The board that you saw earlier about all the homework and all the sessions that happen, that's about five weeks. This intro course is worth the work. You notice how there's a lot of work going in, a lot of materials, a lot of the things that you can utilize, right, um, for your test. And that's twice a week. And then it happens on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's 4.30 p.m. Um, Arab, um, Arabian Standard Time, 5.30 p.m. Um, Gulf Standard Time. If you are in Asia, I think Hong Kong, this one is 9.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. Still doable. I mean, high school students don't really go to school go to sleep at this time. <laughs> so I think that's actually good timing. And then if you are in the uh, Southeast Asia, that's a bit earlier, maybe I think it's 7 to 8 um, p.m. doable. And for those of you who are in the Middle East, yeah. So Dubai, Abu Dhabi is 5.30 p.m. I think also, um, and then if you're in the Doha, other countries, they are in this time zone. So this course is $990 US dollars before discount. We do have partnership discount code with our partner schools. So do check with us if you want to sign up for the course and see if you have a, um, the discount code available and that would save you <laughs> money. And then the second course is our intensive course. Intensive course is for the students who's already scored 1200 and above. Um, so for this is the, the students who really want that extra push to get to hopefully get to above like 1400 and you're done with it. And um, our next one starts on March 13th. And this one takes the student all the way to the May exam. There's an actual May SAT test on May 8th, I believe. And that's when the course ends literally that, that week. Right. So this is really, really good for those um, very, very focused students now. And um, for those who are taking the intro course, they can do the intro and then move on to the intensive, let's say, during the summer or the next course. Eight weeks, same idea, three session. A lot of things are exactly the same. The board, the mentor, everything. It just this is more intensive. <laughs> and um, um, the price is just prorated based on. Um, how many sessions that you do. And during this process, the, it, we make it almost mandatory for those diagnostic tests we do every month in the Saturday for the students to take, uh, almost mandatory. Um, and then we use that as a class material. So through this process, students will take minimum like two full SAT diagnostic and then the intensive courses case, it would be three tests that they will take. Um, yeah, and then again, this number is before discount. After discount, it typically goes down below $2,000 for our um, partner schools and students. And then now next part is why study with Millie? Why should you study with Millie? So the first part is stu study with students from all around the world. I think it's a bit redundant me keep saying it, but here's um, one example that I can share with you. Clearly it's not working today. Um, so what I wanted to share with you is some of the um, testimonials and like the students that who studied with us. And let's see if I can find one of those. Um, now it's gone. Um, <laughs> um, but I think that I think our team did something to update the um, experience, but I think one thing I can share with you is, um, let's see, uh, here. 
So these are some of our um, student student members of our community, and you can see uh, uh, Diptas from uh, Qatar, and uh, Christina's coming from Romania, Scarlett's from Malaysia, and then Omar's from Kuwait. So students are studying and um, studying with um, um, their peers from all around the world. And secondly is um, they can learn from the top mentors. They are, most of our mentors are from Ivy League and Oxbridge, but that's not everything. They care about the students. And um, it's hard to explain like why and how we make that happen, but um, we have a processes in place. So our mentors are a lot of times just as international as our students themselves. So they understand the pain like myself. And um, also, they are more interested in mentoring as opposed to tutoring. And it's very, very important for us, for the mentors during the tutoring session, they talk about the students' favorite podcasts and how, how things are going in school. It's not all about just numbers and tutoring. And then we make it very clear for our mentors to do that. Next one, everything's on our app. So if you're running late, you can just message on your phone. You saw the app, so that's our app both the PC versions available as well as the mobile version. And then I think this is like a key differentiator that we want to highlight is we work with your school and the counselors and yourselves, you are the biggest cheerleader of the, your child. And a lot of times I feel it's unfortunate how the private education and formal education are not linked up together. And we make it happen because we students learn about Millie through schools and take this process and then probably they're coming to you saying I want to take this um, SAT group course because I took the test and I see my scores here I think I can do better or you know another case could be my friend is taking the class like I want to take the class something like this this is a huge um, motivation booster that we saw and um, we also work with the schools so sometimes when it's a school specific course um, if it's not for all everyone, then um, when they give us the schedule of their school, we can accommodate the school schedule. And the fifth one is uh, we are we've been a hundred percent digital way before COVID. We never changed our structure from in person class to online. We were always digital because again we only work with international schools and some hybrid schools, um, bilingual schools or local programs that's taught in English, et cetera. So we had to be 100% digital. Our mentors are all around the world. They are in London, Oxford, Cambridge, Peru, um, Hong Kong, US, Korea, to name a few places. And they all have great, great background, but they're all over the world. And then they can accommodate this schedule that we put together for our student, although they're, you know, they're all over uh, different parts of the world. And then a lot of us actually are coming from Hong Kong and Korea background. And I actually tutored a lot in Korea as well. So there's a lot of things that arguably, obviously, like it's a very competitive um, um, countries when it comes to education. And then when we bring our knowledge and methodology to the Middle East and um, um, Central Eastern Europe part that we use a lot of the knowledge that we have from our background. So that's everything about the group course portion of this presentation. So if you have any questions about the group courses, I can answer them now. Please send them into the chat room. And then the next is I can go through, I will go through some of the st uh, strategies of the SAT part. So group course is over, any questions? No questions? And um, okay, so is it okay that we move over to some of the tips and strategies of the SAT? All right, how many of you guys are students here? Can you raise your hand if you're a student? Okay, so there are some parents and some students. All right, so next 30 minutes, what we're gonna talk about is the strategies of getting the um, strategies for taking the SAT. And today what I'm going to talk about, I think this is important to put it out there. We're talking about the, huh, this is interesting. We're only going to talk about the SAT one and um, 
we're not going to talk about the optional essay or a SAT subject test. This is a great timing, actually. Why? Because um, as of last week, College Board announced that there's no more SAT subject test. There's no more optional essay. So before that, my presentation on this was like, oh, we're only going to talk about this, but there's this other types of tests. But now there's no such test. So we're going to talk about the SAT, SAT. And also, I think it's important to highlight the today's session is to give you a general strategy. And it's not about if you are 700, how to get to 800. It's more like you just started out. Um, you're about 500, 550 in the section, or you've never taken the test. You want to learn some tips and tricks. This is for you. Again, um, I want to highlight this because um, you may think if you're at 700, you may think it's a bit basic. So then, um, then you can you feel free to exit out if you are looking for more um, advanced tips. And then it would be probably best to set up some time with um, Millie counselors, and then they would tell you more one on one, like what's the course you can take, etc. Hope everything's clear. So I'm not gonna go through these because this is like overview, which we've already done. So I'm gonna only do this portion of the section for the next 15 minutes and leave 10 minutes for questions. You guys are so quiet today. I feel like I'm just like, just monologuing the whole time. So there's top 10 tips on acing the SAT. The fundamental side of the things is knowing your timeline. You would be surprised how many students don't know how long is each section and then how many questions are there in each section um, and then use that for your advantage. Prepare and know how much, how, how much time you're gonna spend on each passage, each question. It would be tremendously helpful for you. And then, um, so here's like section breakdowns and like how to do different sections. And that's not as exciting. What we're mostly focused on, focusing on will be the strategic side. So number one tip is the focus on the subject that you're good at and ignore the subject that you're not good at. It's a very counterintuitive, but we'll talk about it. Next is answer all questions, even if you don't know the answer. Number three, study at least six hours before the exam day. Number four, review the SAT score use policy for each college. Number five, take the SAT twice and take AP courses if it's offered at your school. All right, so the fundamental side of the things, know the timelines. So I'm gonna skip this part. So this is like COVID and why you should take it, et cetera. Let's skip it. I wanna get here. So this is the section breakdown of your SAT. Um, section one and two makes up 800 points for your English section. Section three and four make up 800 points of your math section. Here is the number minutes that you're allocated and here's number of questions. What I want to bring your attention to is this section, time per question. Notice how different sections have different amount of time allocated to um, different, like each question. Um, typically the questions that parents have and then students who's never taken the test they have is, uh, does that mean that I'm gonna run out of time in section two? Does that mean that, you know, section four, I'm gonna have the most time relaxing? No, because they've allocated time based on the different difficulties of the test. Typically section two is easier than section one. Section one, think of it as if you are in um, AP, um, section one is um, AP like English literature, and then section two is um, English language. Same for IB students as well. It's um, the one is literature, and then the writing section is more like language or um, the English as a second language, like grammar related section. So obviously the section two is reading is easier because it's spotting the mistakes or what's a better way to write things, et cetera, versus section one, you're gonna be asked to analyze the passage, analyze the author's view, um, things like that. So what's important here is also know that how many passages are in each section. So don't just think it's like there's 52 questions. I'm gonna spend one minute, one minute, 25 seconds in each question. It's five passages. So let's split up five passages 
and then split 65 minutes into five passages, right? So then you have about 13 minutes. So give or take, let's say you need to spend about 11 to 15 minutes in one passage to be able to finish the whole section in time, right? This is the strategy that you need to keep in mind. And then these are the things that other students may not do before taking the test. So next one is um, section three and four. They're the math sections. And um, one section is with no calculator. The other section is with the calculator. Does the section with the calculator, is it so much harder than section three? I wouldn't say so much harder. It's slightly harder maybe, but yeah. Secondly, biggest mistake the students make is only because do I need to use calculator for every single question for section four? The answer is a no. A lot of times you can do probably like more than half of the questions without the calculator. And sometimes students are kind of overthinking and thinking that you need to use a calculator because it says that you should use a calculator and you spend time like double calculating when you already know the answer and you run out of time. We've seen a lot of these cases and maybe some of you have experiences doing this as well. So we recommend use a calculator when you need it, when you know the answers, don't feel obliged to check your answers um, like two, three, four, five times on your calculator. All right, is everything clear here? Raise your hand, it's everything's clear. Okay, good. So let's move on to the strategic side of the thing. This was just explaining the differences between multiple choice and grid in. It's pretty easy, self-explanatory, so we're gonna move on. So the strategic side here, number one tip. Again, this I said, like I said, could be um, a bit counterintuitive. Focus on the subject that you're good at. Until you get to about 1250 or above, focus on your strength area will actually give you better results. Hmm, what, does, what do I mean by this? So based on the um, 2018 data, this is the national average of the, all the students who took the SAT. And let's just say that our base case scenario is about 500, 500 on each, sec, each um, section you started. And then um, scenario one is you're good at English and you decided to study English. And you're like, okay, you know, I actually understand this. I should have studied this before. Wow, I feel good about it. Now I'm, you know, studying and um, I can understand things more, spend right time, amount of time in each passage, etc. After, let's say you studied X number of hours, let's say 100 hours, just, just for the sake of um, this scenario. Then out of 100 hours, let's say you spend 80 hours on English and then you did some math and then 20 hours here. And based on that, now you got 1250 because you studied a lot, the subject that you are good at and you understand. And through this process, you studied math a little bit as well and you got used to the test um, structure. Notice how you got 1250. Now, let's say the same student decided to spend 80 hours on math. And a lot of times likely that he or she may have not even spent 80 hours because you don't like math and you just feel like it's just such a pain to do this, right? And then your score doesn't go up as much. And then you didn't study English as much. So also your English score doesn't go up as much either. So at the end, combined score is lower than if you were what you would have gotten if you studied the subject that you enjoy and are good at. Does that make sense? Um, obviously, after a certain point, once you get to 1250, 1300 range, you cannot <laughs> overlook the subject that you're not good at because you can only go up so much with one subject, right? Even if you get 800 on one subject, if you get 500 on the other subject, that's 1300, you cannot go up anymore. By that point, that's why we put 1250, you can go study on updating your weak subject. Hopefully this answers that um, kind of like question about the statement. Number two, there's no penalty in guessing. You don't get points off by putting wrong answers. Um, 
we still get these questions because there are so many different types of tests, right? There is like, I don't know, like TOEFL, IELTS, like, you know, ACT, Cambridge assessment, whatever. Everyone does things differently. So people still get um, nervous about putting in wrong answers. There's no penalty. So definitely fill in every single bubble that you see. Even the grid in questions answer, whatever, put number, put one, 10, whatever you wanna put in because who knows? you can get those answers correct. Number three is study at least six hours before the exam date. So if you're a high performing student, if your child is a high performing, then you would think it's like, oh, it's, of, of course you gotta study more than six hours before taking the test. But <laughs> you'd be surprised how many don't. And um, here's why you should do that. This is the study that's done by, um, College Board and um, Khan Academy, and they show the results of the actual SAT test score um, of the students who use the Khan Academy stuff for six hours plus, and then also students who didn't use Khan Academy, right? It shows that the students who used it six hours or more, they scored on average 90 points higher than the students who didn't do it. Okay. There's another point here that's 20 hours and you got 115 points. Why then isn't Jenna telling me to study 20 hours before? Um, that's because this is what in the math world, it would, um, it's called diminishing return. Diminishing return um, means you don't get as much of a value out of it. Um, this graph is very purposefully misleading. It looks like it's like gray to be studying 20 hours. But if you think about it, how come you studied six hours and you did 90 points better and you studied 14 more hours and then you only get 25 points more? 25 points is like one to five questions, basically, anywhere from there. So you study 14 more hours and you only get that many more questions right. What's going on here? So. Our recommendation here is this. Six hour definitely gives help um, a very good results for everyone. You self-study six hours. And then after that, you can decide. You know if you are good with self-studying or you need someone to study with. So when you de decide that you need someone to study with, there's a few things you can do, right? You can form a study group with your friends and then study together, FaceTime together, whatever, do what you want to do. Or I need a tutor. I need a you know tutor to help me. I want to really just like get to the point. I cannot sit still. So that's the case, then you can work with companies like Millie. So it's a personal choice. But what I want to highlight is you studying six hours first and recognize what you want to do based on your learning style. Okay, so this is another section we get a lot of questions about. So this question is, review, review the SAT, um, this tip is, review the SAT score use policy for each college because different colleges and different departments take the SAT scores differently. Um, so most schools, luckily, they do this thing called super scoring. Um, and you can see the example here. A student took to test twice. One time, she got 1100. Second time, she got 1250. But based on the super scoring um, method, her grade is actually 1300 because the school asked for the highest score of each section from the student. So the student can combine 600 in English from exam one and then 700 on math from the exam two. That's what happens here. Now, um, does the next question we get asked is like, oh, oh is super scoring only for like uh, low tier schools? And if you go to like top schools, like do they not do this? Um, the answer is a no. Um, we know for sure, <laughs> like we went to office, the admission sessions. I mean, it, it's on the website as well, but Princeton does super scoring, Columbia does super scoring, Cornell does super scoring. Majority of the schools do super scoring. And I'm mentioning this Ivy League school just to show you it's not that the just the mediocre, whatever you want to call it, schools do um, super scoring. Second 
popular, second most popular one is the single highest test date score. This is self-explanatory. This is pretty much like any other tests. It's just like a normal, right? <laughs> you look at one test date and how you did it is how you do it. Um, some schools, however, do this all scored required for review. An example is Stanford, um, and then they look at every single test score, but very few schools do this. Last but not least, take the SAT twice and take the AP courses if they're offered. Why take it twice? Um, I guess it's pretty obvious. We just talked about super scoring, so you can benefit from super scoring, but to um, apparently College Board did more research on their own and it's a peace of mind, right? Um, two out of three students who took the SAT again, improved their scores. Um, makes sense, right? <laughs> you just get more used to it. Next one is why are we recommending you to take the AP course? According to College Board, um, students who took the uh, AP course, so AP is for the American program students. So if you are following the American curriculum, your school has AP. If you are following British program, it's A-level. If you're following the um, international curriculum, it's international baccalaureate. There could be French, there could be other things, your local ones. Don't worry about it. If your school doesn't offer AP, you don't need to go out and try to you know, sign up for AP test. That's not the point. The point is if your school offers, take it because the research shows that people who take the AP are doing better than those students who are not taking the AP. Pe students who are in the American system, they would, you guys would think are, you, you guys would think that's like, oh, that's obvious because the AP students are the high performing students. So it's not the AP class. It's like, it's the level of students who's going into AP. Um, you're right. But there's also another reason. College Board administers both the SAT and AP, meaning there must be similarities in the rationale, how the test is designed, how the, you know, the test designers are. Although granted it's a very different test, but then it's still administered by the same, um, same entity. So if that's the case, let's say you are in an American school, um, and you have a choice to take SAT versus ACT. ACT is another test type. I would strongly suggest you to take SAT because it's coming from the same um, administrator. Hope that makes sense. So that's everything that I wanted to share with you guys today. And here are some resources that we have. These are the things that you just, um, you can also Google, but um, you know, there's more in depth about what is a SAT super score. Like we have these, um, articles here. And um, if you're interested, we can share the deck with you after. And um, also in terms of resources, you saw earlier, our Instagram has a lot of those um, resources, not just about the SAT, but you know, pros and cons of different university system, internship, about the Zoom or the in-person school, early admissions, different UK universities, et cetera. So definitely go check it out. Our Instagram is here. And if you haven't done so already, sign up to our newsletter. Newsletter means we send you emails about the webinars and when there's promotion going on about our SAT um, class, whatnot, you'll get all of these notified. Yeah, so that's everything today. So I can stay on for another 10 minutes. So any parents, any students at this point, if you have any questions, I can answer all of your questions. I don't see any questions here. So um, I'm gonna wait for a couple minutes and then still no questions and I'm gonna end the session a bit early. All right, I'm still not seeing any questions. <laughs> you guys are very quiet today. Um, can we, so Hillary asked, can he, can she get the, um, um, can she get the links to all the resources? Yes, we'll send you the resources link.
No more questions. Okay. So then for those of you who joined both our sessions, that was like two and a half hours of marathon talking about the SAT. So great job. And for those parents who have more questions about um, the group courses or questions on us, you can actually just come to our website and then sign up for a um, sign up for the um, consultation, and then we can share a lot of all the information. So this is our website here, and then here you can click the free consultation, and then this is where you can book your consultation. And if you're like, okay, I heard enough about uh, the programs, I don't need any, I don't need a consultation. I know what I want. Then you can just come to our e-commerce website here. And then you can click the intensive course or the writing um, uh, intro course. There, these are some for um, admission stuff. So you don't need to worry about it. And then you can do quick view, start date, and then add to cart and then go here. You can go here and then you will see from here mm, what happened. <laughs> go to checkout. You can also put in the discount code. So here I put the discount code of one of our um, partner schools and you can put your discount code here. Hmm, which school should I SK? Oh, yeah. So there's a 20% discount here and then um, you can sign up this way. All right, so then thank you so much for coming today and um, I'll see you and your um, children and everyone